All right, the PCB still sucks. Babar Azam is out as captain. Shan Masood is in. Uh, Shahid Shahin Rafizi is in as captain. Mickey Arthur is out. Hafiz is in. Morni Morkel is out. Omar Gul is supposedly in. Abdul Razak is a sexist pig. Um, Karachi Kings hate Babar Azam. And in between all of this, we had two semifinals played in the World Cup, uh, which are the least important uh, items on the agenda today. So uh, welcome once again to the Shot Yar podcast. I'm Usman Khalid. Uh, we were supposed to have a full crew today, but Ramiz uh, canceled on us last minute. So we're left with uh, the three least entertaining members of the podcast, which is me, Haris, and uh, Zan. What's going on, guys? Doing pretty good, man. How about yourself? Not bad. Zen, how's the baby? Good, alhamdulillah. Good. Good, man. Yeah, yeah man. it's uh, <laughs> taking a new turn on the chapter. So I'm going to be a little bit more, I might swear less on the pod. Actually, fuck that. I think I'm good. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, don't yeah. you have another kid? Like, is the, is the kid yeah. like, um, more important? So, now? yeah, man, this is awesome. This is awesome. Drama Cup continues. You know, we are the clowns of the Pakistan, or of the cricket stage, and you know, honestly, doing a, a Pakistan cricket podcast, you you get a lot of content, man. So you know what? We're not short of content. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. So this is awesome. Yeah, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I hope you guys are too. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's begin, right? We got a lot to get to. We don't have time to make useless chatter today. There's so much to get to. So we're going to try to rock through these quickly. Um, but, you know, we also don't want to, we want to take our time with discussing these because there's a lot of you know, different aspects to this. So let's start with the, obviously the biggest one. Babar Azam steps down as captain in all formats. Um, so the way this went down was kind of kind of weird too, right? Uh, Babar Azam put out a statement uh, yesterday morning our time. And he, and, you know, he just put out a, a statement on, on Instagram and Twitter. And he just said that I'm, I'm stepping down from um, captaincy in all formats. He didn't, I don't want to read the whole thing, but Essentially, he just thanked PCB for, uh, you know, giving him the opportunity. And he said that the number one ODI ranking was, uh, you know, the work of everybody that was kind of the part of that team and coaching staff and all that stuff. Um, PCB put out a statement uh, <laughs> a little bit later. Uh, and they said something that was different from what Bob Radin said, which was that um, he was going to get relieved from captaincy in white ball cricket and that you know after he was made aware of that he consulted with his family and decided to step down from captaincy in all formats so this is the reason i'm saying all this is because um just a poor management of the situation um all around baba i think ramiz was the one who said in one of our previous episodes when pcb released that statement in the middle of the world cup that he should get ahead of it and resign right now um which, you know, in the middle of a World Cup probably wasn't a good idea. But I, I do agree with this from, from Barbara's perspective. I think don't give these guys any more reasons to, um, you know, make you look worse or, or kind of uh, make themselves look better in these kind of scenarios. I think his time was up anyways. Um, I think I think this guy had his run four years Um or whatever it was, but yeah, uh, what do you? I, I want to make this positive about Babur. I think this guy brought a lot of grace to Pakistan cricket. He he, you know, I think we've talked about it before. I think he removed a lot of the cancers from the team in terms of toxicity and all that stuff. So I I do appreciate that about him. That being said, I think tactically he wasn't the best. A bit too defensive for my liking, particularly you know we saw in this World Cup, um, that did come back to bite us quite a bit. So I want to celebrate him a little bit. Um, I think this is kind of a, an era coming to an end. Um, and yeah, I'm going to miss him as captain. All that, you know, it, it feels kind of weird to say that. I, I am going to miss him as captain. It feels like it's it's been a long time. And um, before we get to Sean Masood and the upcoming series, uh, yeah, give me, your, give me your thoughts on what you guys think of his overall tenure. Uh, what do you take out of it? And, and where do we go next? Yeah, like you said, uh, end of an era we've done a lot of crapping on Bobby's captaincy the past couple months but um just looking back now it's hard not to be a little at least a little reminiscent a little nostalgic about the past four years a lot of highs a lot of lows um right like like you said some a lot of things can be said about his captaincy defensive not creative enough at the end of the day two t20 world cup semifinals one final almost uh, fifth place finish in the world cup isn't a terrible return um, obviously, you want do you think the potential was, was there to be even better? And um, yeah, just highs and lows and it's a little bit nostalgic, but looking forward to 
see what uh, Sean Masood and Shaheen can bring to the table. Yeah, I, I said at the beginning of this, like, you know, when the World Cup started that I'm not, uh, I think that Bobber shouldn't be captain. You know, I had said that, uh, you know, but it, the one thing that makes me so angry is the way that they, that these things are executed. Um, you know, like he, he's done so much for Pakistan cricket. He literally like, and I commented, this was, he gave us like respect, dude. He gave us, dude, from again, hottest, maybe you're too young for this, but from 2010, like the 2010s, I'd say even 2007 onwards after that 2007 world T20 defeat, from then onwards, after Yunus Khan got us the T20 uh, World Cup, literally, like, there was no way in hell we were beating India in any games. You know, he won, beat them. He gave us a chance to believe that we could beat them. And he also gave us a chance to believe that we could perform on, you know, like, top stage. We are, you know, the team that we always believe that we are so he always gave us that yeah his captaincy isn't the best and i feel like the resources he has and resources i'm talking uh you know strategic and and tactical resources people in his ear that can help him be a better captain they just they're just not there um and i don't think he ever played with misbah maybe he did he might have played with misbah for a short time but he just never had that from misbah and um you know, it, uh, he just, he, he didn't have that, but I wish the PCB hadn't disrespected him, you know, hadn't made him feel like trash had it had been like, you know what, listen, we, we back you. What do you need from us? Or what would you like, if you want to step down? All right, that's fine. You know, we'll accept that, but we want to make sure that you get the respect you deserve. And it just pisses me off. You know, I see that tweet from that loser Schwab Jutt where he's like, oh, waiting to see more. Like, dude, you have zero self-respect and like you are literally scum of the earth. And then I'm looking also at, I want to shift a little bit. Can I shift a little bit? I'm going to shift a little bit. Sure. So I just want to, yeah, to your point, I just want to add one thing on the, the respect thing. PCB did not tweet anything. Uh, but we know what's going on we know what's going on behind the scenes right yeah it's almost like you're at work yeah and when somebody gets fired literally i just saw this coming yesterday the guy's been with the company for 10 years uh so and so is no longer with the company um you know we wish him best of luck that's it but when somebody's leaving of their own accord you know this person gave everything to us you know we want to you know where they go we wish them best of luck we want them to succeed blah 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 you can tell, right? Like where, where, you know, something, someone is leaving of their own accord or whatnot. Also what the respect factor is, right? And the one thing that I, I noticed is if you guys noticed on, on, uh, on uh, Twitter, there was, there was three people, there was three people that tweeted um, for that. I read for Bubber, like they retweeted it and they added something. So Rizwan, very personal statement. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, you know, professionalism in there because it's on Twitter. But very personal. He wrote Kaptana, you know, you know, it's been an honor to serve you, blah, blah, blah. If the, you know, he was like, you know, like he just, it was so personal, right? Like, you know, highs and lows, you know, looking forward to seeing you score heavily, your resilience and determination. Like it was very good. And then Shaheen Shah Afridi, you know, it just, when I read that, I was like, this guy literally called somebody up or went to chat GPT and said, you'll write me something for a guy that I play with. It just felt so not personal. Like you two together, like Bobber Shaheen, I think those two are the key figures that have brought us where we are. Our left arm, you know, seam bowling came back because of Shaheen. Our batting is there because of Bobber. These two are pivotal in our success. And again, and it goes back to exactly what I said. Shaheen Shah Afridi is going to be hated by us. Or he's going to ruin his own career because he has Shai the Freebie in his ear, a very toxic person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, okay. I, I, I said a lot there. I, I, I think we need to stop this cycle of, like, hating whoever the captain it's, is. I think it needs to end how, how is I tweeted it about this How is it hate, though? Are you talking about me? No, no, I mean, I, it, I know it's not. No, okay. no, no. I'm, I'm talking about okay. in general. There, there's a lot of lobbying going on right now since. The, okay, so I, I want to start with, like, the, you know, the PCB not tweeting anything positive about Babur. All it takes is for you to say, I know, you know, it didn't end well. All it takes is is just just mm-hmm. tweet something nice. Just say, 
Baba, thanks for your services for four years. It was, you know, thanks for taking us to number one in, in you know, ODI rankings, whatever. That's all it takes. Um, and, and you kind of move on to the next chapter, right? It doesn't, it that doesn't take a lot of effort. We know that these guys already had their captains picked out. It took them less than two hours to announce the new captains on Twitter. So that's, that's, what I, that's where I was getting at in the beginning too, is that mm-hmm. Baba stepping down or being relieved of his captaincy is not really, this was already all decided. You know, they put out a press release saying Baba Hazam is meeting with mm-hmm. uh, Chairman Zaka Ashraf and like, I can only imagine how that meeting went. And I got to, again, I got to give props to Baba Razam. They made those videos and they, they posted those pictures of him shaking uh, fucking Zaka Ashraf's hand. And he was smiling. Like, this guy was positive through and through. He could have been toxic like a lot of other captains of the past, but he didn't do any of that. This guy left with a smile on his face. There were pictures of him. People took pictures, uh, photos of him while he was driving out of there. And I have nothing but respect for that. This guy, you know, mm-hmm. after everything he went through in the last two, three weeks, nothing but respect. He's ready to kind of put this aside and move forward. But then, you know, you also wonder about things like how is this going to impact the, the the team, right? And and the point you bring about Shaheen, and, and, and that that is a valid point because um, now I'm seeing stuff on Twitter like, oh, Shaheen hates uh, Babur. And like, oh, Sha- we now, the, the Babur lobby is out now against uh, Sean Masood, right? And, and Shaheen Arpidi. So it's like, and I tweeted about this today and I said that, if you had a problem with the lobby against Babar, you are now doing the same thing. So we need to end this cycle somewhere. At some point, we need to say, the captains, we got to support them and we got to see what they can do. People are shitting on Sean Masood and we'll get more into Sean Masood, you know, and, and what his captaincy actually means for our test tour to Australia coming up and overall for the World Test Championship. But people are people are already dismissing him as like, I, I know he doesn't have the best average in test cricket as a batsman, but people are, are already um, shitting on him before this guy is even captain in the game. And I, I don't think that's fair. But, the, you know, the, anyway, the I think, is, Haris, you want to say something? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Haris. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, I, I want to get your guys' input. Like, he, I know he, like, resigned, but he, like, he definitely pretty much got relieved, right? Yeah, like yeah. we were are we in agreement about that. Like that's like the I I think so. I think so. I think I when think you so went too, there, right. I think PCB statement is actually uh, probably more in line with the truth. But they didn't have to say that, man. Let the guy, you know, if, yeah. if he wants to uh-huh. make it, you know, uh, if you've already decided, like you know, we we talked about this before. If you've already decided that you're gonna fire him, fire him. But uh, wait until everything's done in the World Cup. We said that, and then you know, let him if he wants to resign. Uh, and and just give up captaincy and all let him do that and just give him respect for Mm -hmm. captaining the team for the last four years that's all you need to do and now what you're doing is you're you're putting him in a very tough situation as a batsman he's you know you're putting the team in a very tough situation in terms of uh you know team bonding and stuff like that and it it matters in pakistan cricket it matters so much that this kind of stuff comes up often Mm -hmm. you know time and time again let me and we've talked about it in our first episode of this podcast we talked about it and it's i'm I'm afraid it's going to come back uh, that's my only thing. Like, okay, when when Sir Faraz was ousted as captain because Misbah came in as, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry, he was all three. Uh, you know, Sir Faraz was ousted, and a lot of people, Shadab, Hassan Ali, like Fakhar Zaman, like the people that won the Champions Trophy, the youngsters that came up together with Sir Faraz, they were up. They weren't happy about it, you know, and no, like. Because Bobber had performed so well, nobody was like upset at Bobber. It wasn't like somebody coming, you know, it's like you grab somebody and you pop them in the team and now they're captain. Um, it wasn't like that, right? Like Bobber was performing and it was like, all right, like you replaced him with Bobber. That's cool. We we love Bobber. Uh, but in this situation, it's a little bit different because again, it goes back to the whole respecting. They do that time and time again, right? People, somebody like Misba who stepped down on his own, that's perfect, right? He took his wins and he he stepped down. And he had already said it. I think it was before that West Indies tour um, when uh, Shannon Gabriel took that wild swing. I think that's when he stepped down. Um, so it was like a win. He went out on a winning note. Why did he do that? That one, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that one. And then even Mickey. <laughs> My favorite. I was, about to say, well, then, even... <laughs> I was saying, wasn't there like a long push for Miss Bud to like leave like the test arena? Like. Like I don't think year, so, man. He, he was performing until like, the end. He had like bad form that last year. I don't think, think so? he had. I don't remember now. We'd have to look at his stats, but 
All I know is yeah, that it's that's funny. what happens no. with everybody, yeah. right? They, that's what it is. Yeah. Everybody. Who goes out they're going to do the same thing to Sean Masood. Right. They're going to do the same thing to he, Shaheen. Afridi. I think he did score like a 90-something in like his second last innings or something. And then if like, Shun, that was the only good score. If Shun flops, uh-huh. flops in Australia. And again, like, you know, nobody thinks that Pakistan and Australia is a death sentence. Like, Shani taking this assignment, like, as a new captain is... is like he's literally coming yeah. in thinking that I he agree. can do something, and he might be thinking like, you know what, I got the balls, I can do it. You know, we'll we'll wait and see. But I think that the the lobby aspect that you're talking about, I don't think Bubber's like that. I think he's coming in. I think he lets his bat talk, and he's done that several no, times. No, no, I I the the lobby. I I don't think, but you're right. I don't think Bubber's like that. I I think he's a much uh, he has more respect. For himself and the mm-hmm. team than that I, i'm talking about everybody on twitter and everybody oh, on social screw media them, man just stop it it needs to end sometime right like we need as fans and as people who support this team ex-cricketers journalists media we need to stop this at some point and i you know now we're getting into a discussion about shan masood but before we do that uh, we'll talk about that right after this but before we do that give me your favorite moment from Babar azam's captaincy uh from the last however long he's been captain Ooh, it's a good question. Um, first one that comes to mind is a whole when Kudrak and Nizam first came out, we we're zero and two, and then things just clicked. You know, beat South Africa, beat Netherlands, beat Bangladesh, beat England, beat and beat New Zealand. I wish we beat England. The whole like lead up to that, um, felt like Baba was really behind that. There was also um that series in South Africa, the T Twenty series. I think the first couple T Twenties he was he was doing really slowly, and then like the last match chasing two hundred, he scored like the perfect t20 innings like 100 off like 50 balls um yeah, those are probably my top two yeah mine's very uh broken record but uh 152 for zero india versus pakistan yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah. and people are referencing another one they're saying like 250 something for zero against uh england which one's that is there one that like, doesn't I, really I, don't, know. I don't know about that. Mine, mine is uh, the 152 for zero. I think everybody like. I don't think that this, was guy, good this guy doesn't get enough credit for. I th- I don't know. I think it was Zan you who mentioned that right off the top. This guy doesn't get enough credit for finally getting us over that hump of beating India in a World Cup and beating them so comprehensively uh, in a World Cup. For me, that's you know you do that and that's that's worth you know everything. Um, Given that how how much we uh, tend to crumble under pressure against those guys, and it happened again in this World Cup too, but that to me is worth gold, um, and he deserves all the credit for that. Oh. Uh, but my favorite is the the sorry, just, my favorite is the one ninety six against Australia. Oh yeah, that, that was nice match. too. That was, that was too, very nice. That, 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 that was, was a captain's that was incredible. Uh, no, remember the seven yeah. match T twenty series last year against uh, England. Dude, that oh, was yeah. a sick series, man. For seven games, that was a... It won, it won Game 7, didn't it? Like, yeah, it was, like it was Game 7 through, and we right? lost in Game 7. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, we got crushed in the last game. Well, they that. scored 209 and we got all out for 142. But uh, 203 yeah. for zero against England. They scored 199 and, and Bobber scored a century, 110. And Rizwan scored 88. Yeah. So what's okay? So that that's what it is. Sorry, man. I, there's so much I want to talk about, and I know, like, I'm a little short. Like, I, I I have to go at a certain time. But, um, what's the next topic? Uh, so next topic is I, I wanted to get into Sean Masood's captaincy and partic- specifically the test. You know, he's the test captain. I want to talk a little bit about the Australia tour. But before we do that. Muted, bro. I'm muted. Yeah. yeah, now you're good. Sorry. So you said before we All do right, that. That's a blooper that we can add in there. Before yeah. we do that, and there was a long silence after that? <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, before we get into Sean Masood and Test Cap and see, um, uh, anybody who's thinking that Babur is going to bat better as uh, without the pressure of captaincy, Mother Urshit pointed out on Twitter that uh, his averages in both tests and ODIs are actually lower um when he wasn't captain but you know you can attribute that, that to him just being a younger player and growing he's probably improved as a batsman uh, playing a lot of zimbabwe but... you know playing a lot of like <laughs> zimbabwe, zimbabwe. At being home. zimbabwe really yeah helps, you right? know playing zimbabwe <laughs> playing a lot of tests at home on like ramiz raja's pitches so yeah 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay, let's get into Sean Masood, and this is going to be a, a fun discussion. I'm excited to talk about this. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about Sean Masood, the test captain? I like it. I like it. I always thought he was um, like hard done by. He was always in and out of the squad. Um, even like the past couple of years, he was a pretty solid test opener. And even in Australia last time, he was like our best batsman probably. Um, good cricketing mind. I've heard a lot of people say that about him. Captain Yorkshire in the county cricket, which is no small feat. I mean, I mean that's a pretty like really good like domestic league. Um, good numbers there with the bat. Good numbers in the guy the Ozum Trophy. And obviously the you know the age is the issue. Thirty four, like he was what thirty three, thirty four. But to me, I I see this as like a like something similar to when we brought in Mizba, like after the whole spot fixing scandal, like take over the reins for a couple of years as you've you know reached the prime into your twilight years. Um, I think the PCB said like they're gonna keep him as captain until the 2025 World Test Championship. Um, so if, we, we, if I look at it until then, I I'm, I don't mind at all. I'm actually kind of a fan of it. Okay, yo, captaincy of Yorkshire. Let's be honest, he's a diversity hire. Uh, Yorkshire is going through some crazy racism scandal, and 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 I heard about that. <laughs> and, and Sean, That's actually a very good Shani point. I never thought about that. a diversity hire. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a a dick or anything, but that's just what it is. No, but, no. Okay, but relax. And, and he he does have counter, skills. Not seeing counterpoint. He is like the counterpoint. He's like the whitest desi ever, wasn't he? Like born in like Kuwait, and he speaks. That's like why they get English. what they want with him, right? Like he still can. He, he, speaks, he speaks better English than yeah. us. Um, he does. Yeah. I would think so. <laughs> very well. Now told. that's a guy who can respond in less than a minute. Yeah, there That's you funny. go, right? That's one edge he has over Bobber, according to Huddis. Yeah. Um, Yo, man, you're probably going to hear so a lot of clicks because I I'm, I'm really want to look at his stats from the last tour. Huddis, hit us with the stats. You said he did really well in the last tour of Australia. What were they? Let me okay. look it up. In the meantime, I'll tell you his stats. I have them in my notes here. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm also going to say, like, caveat, because I know Yasser Shah scored a century the, with, like, the greatest innings of all time, so I'm not going to count that. I think um, I think you're thinking of the tour before last tour. Um, no, he Yasser Shah, yeah. Oh, he, he did? did? Second okay. test. There, was, okay. there was only two test series, I actually. do remember that 100, but I, I thought it was the one before. Anyway, uh, I want to mention I, uh, Sean Masu's average in test cricket is... 28 and he's played 29 <laughs> 29 matches or 30 matches so his average is lower than his number of games played which is not good but uh it, let's look at the last year right this guy captain yorkshire like we said uh he averaged uh, he scored 720 runs at 60 with the bat pretty good uh performing well also in the pakistan cup sorry um, can i just say really Hansen? good considering this is english soil right like he's playing on english yeah, pitches. that's, that's really good that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. um that's where you need technique. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, proper technique. And he's always been a very good technically proficient batsman. Uh, like Hada said, I think he's always been kind of somebody... I don't think his average does justice to his batting prowess. Agreed. Um, so I, I think this is one of those cases where averages don't... I, I think if Ramiz was here, he'd be yelling at us, but because um, he, he loves looking at averages. But, you know, the averages... We miss are, you, Ramiz. Yeah. <laughs> we do miss you, buddy. Um, but yeah, since since returning from, from Yorkshire back to Pakistan domestic scene, he scored uh, 672 runs in 12 innings at 61.09. So that's... Those are really good numbers. Um, this guy's in good form. He does have leadership skills. He, he led Yorkshire, like we said... Um, uh, how many how many wins season. did Yorkshire have in that season? They won like two and three with eight draws, two I'm pretty three. sure. Or three and two with eight draws. Two wins, three losses, or three wins, two losses, and they like eight draws. Eh, I don't know what to say Wait, about that. Do you have the stats? Do you have the stats for the Australia series? Hottest? Yeah. Uh it was only a two match series. Uh so he had four innings, average of 39, 150, high score of 68. Um not bad. Not bad. Which is not bad. I mean, he's also, I mean, Correct me if I'm wrong. The only Pakistan player I think who can properly play a pull shot, which you need in Australia. Well, he's an opener in England, oh. like in county cricket, and that's not easy. Mm-hmm. And in Australia, it's okay. double not easy because Australia is coming full. They're coming guns blazing, man. They'll have their full, you know, uh, Mitchell Stark, Scott Boland, yeah. Josh Hazelwood, Pat Cummins. They got the whole like they'll probably play four Pacers, right? So. Yeah. Um, so let's do this, right? Um, is there somebody that you guys would have made test captain other than Sean Masood? So Fraz. 
I knew that no, was coming. I no. mean, if we're no, if we're I, talking I, I, Aries extra pros is 34. Sean Masood is also 34. So I mean, like, you know, if we're talking like age and we're talking like that kind of stuff, then yeah, like why not Sir Fraz? He's performing. Rizwan isn't performing. Sir Fraz is the first take wicket keeper. He's a good captain. I would take Sir Fraz all day. Uh, who else? There's really nobody else, man. I'm thinking like, because I'm thinking based on like your performance, like who's one down? Bobber. Who's two down? Like, you know, you got Saud Shaquille. You have Aga Salman in there. You have All Imam right. at the top. Me, you have Abdullah Shafiq at the top. None of them are captains, right? Like, so who do you take? No, uh, hold on, hold on. So let me let me read you some facts about a guy that I think you're going to put together as I'm okay. telling you these. This guy captain Pakistan in the Under-19 World Cup in 2014. Pakistan were runner-ups. They played South Africa. Uh, Aidan Markram was the captain for South Africa in that tournament. Um, this guy captain Pakistan in the Emerging Asia Cup in 2019, where Pakistan won. This guy captain Pakistan Shaheens on the tour to Sri Lanka in, the, in 2021. Uh, the first class series there was drawn 0 0. Uh, Pakistan won the three match list A series 1 0. Two matches were rained out. He's 28 years old and he's a mainstay in our test squad right now. Fawad Alam. South Shaquille. Fawad Alam. Fawad Alam. South Shaquille. Uh, that would have been my mm, pick. Nice. Um, but so my second it, yeah, pick is Sean Masood. No, I mean, statistically, we're talking about leadership qualities, right? right? This guy has led bring... Pakistan and, and the, at, at junior levels all the way up to Pakistan Shaheens. This is your guy, 28 years old. Make him make a bold call and make him captain. First of all, this is Pakistan um, my cricket, other, my, my... where you still go to somebody that might have only played one test match, but you're going to go to them and be like, hello, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Right? Like, you can't bring somebody who's younger and then expect them to respect him like that if he hasn't, like, proven himself. How many tests has Shouts killed? And again, if I'm I'm with you. I agree with you 100%. Seven. If this is what you're telling me, Shouts kill he would be an amazing captain. But you're going to bring this guy in. He's going to get mentally destroyed. His career is going to get derailed. I, I can, yeah. Yeah. From what you're describing, yes, it would be a horrible... This is the thing, right? This would be a horrible idea in Pakistan. In practice, in any mm. other system, this would be a Graham great Smith. idea. Look, look, look at somebody like Graham Smith. I was just going to say, great, yeah. uh, they, they, they took a call on him. They made a, they made a bold move. And look, look, look what that guy did for South Africa cricket, right? This is your guy, 28 years old. You know, I my second choice was Sean Masood. So I'm happy with that. But like Hadis said, this is a stopgap solution. He's 34 years old. I gave Sir Fraz a lot of hell for being 36. And I was like, you know, this guy's too old. I, I cannot be picking and choosing in that kind of a scenario, right? I cannot say that. I do agree, Sean. Sean you do need to look forward at some point and, and not pick somebody who's 34 years old as a captain. But if it's got to be anybody who's, you know, old, I do think Sean Masood is the guy. Uh, over anybody else if it's going to be kind of a stopgap thing for two years uh, until this cycle of uh, uh, the World Test Championship ends. But yeah, my guy would have been, uh, you know, South Shaquille, I think. But, I, you know, Zan, you bring up a very good point that he wouldn't survive uh, kind of the <laughs> the politics of Pakistan cricket uh, at, at a young age with so many seniors on, in, in the side. And he's from Karachi. so many other... Uh, and he's, and he's that's a, that's a big deal, dude. People make it such a big because nobody play, like nobody gets really gets selected from there, right? That's what I've heard. There hasn't been too many players. They're all like Lahore, right? And again, man, I don't get into this kind of bullshit, but uh, that's also another thing I think that would play a big role. Like I think yeah. I'm better than you guys. But yeah, I, I mean, I you know you can't. So I mean, <laughs> on this level. <laughs> <it turns> into... <laughs> Can you speak fluent Punjabi yeah, though? Man, I... I'm sick. No, okay. So no, no, not the pod, Punjabi. It's not, not the right time for you guys. <laughs> what do you mean, not the pod? <laughs> oh, we have back. Pakistani listeners, man. We don't have any like North American. Listeners. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. Maybe it's not the best. Um, okay, <laughs> so okay, so we have Shani. You know, I'm okay. I like Shani to be honest. I like him. People are gonna shit on him for sure because again, you basically ripped out your favorite player and you're putting somebody else there. It could have been anyone. I'm gonna be very honest. Shaheen Shah Fridi, I kind of, he's left a bad taste in my mouth right now. I'm not too happy with his selection as captain. Uh, I feel like he had a big role to play during the World Cup of uh, not performing, but not also backing Bubber. So I think that's why it gets me that there's somebody in his ear 
constantly saying, "If this is you who should be captain, you're better." But, but you're... do you do you actually think? Um, do you actually think that there's like, like he himself would have wanted Bobber to leave captain C so that he could become captain? Is that what you're saying? I think that if Bobber made a bad decision, he didn't back him, and he just said, "Well, this is his decision, not mine." Or or if he made a, I you know what I mean? Like, I yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. Did, did you guys see? I've been seeing this clip on Twitter, uh, where it's from like a T twenty game or something. I don't know, I don't know how old this game is, but people have been posting. Bobber fans have been posting this clip on Twitter, and it's uh, it's after Shaheen takes a wicket, and all the players are running towards Shaheen, and Bobber runs towards him, and he wants to give him like a hug or a high five. And Shaheen just kind of brushes him aside and gives somebody else a high five. <laughs> and people are like, oh, look, he always hated Baba. This guy was always out to get him. And I'm like, this is a problem. On the field, man, there's just 10 guys time, man. running at you, right? Like, I just, there in the Indi- <laughs> India game the other day, I saw they're in a huddle. They're all huddled up. And, you know, you I thought all of them were there. And then Shubman Gill comes from somewhere. And you see Mohammed Siraj running in. And by the time Mohammed Siraj gets there, they break the huddle. If this was the Pakistan team, they'd be like, oh, they hate Muhammad Siraj because he's Muslim. You know, like they would, there would be something there that they would be like, yo, they hate this guy. You know, they would have some sort of beef or something right away. I think this is BS. I, just in the game, have you seen the clip in the game? Um, uh, I think it was the England game, the last game of the World Cup. And Rizwan's going to high five Shaheen and Bobber's grabbing his hand and trying to stop it. Have you guys seen that? I think it's all just jokes and yeah, fun, yeah, man. It's just I like, you know. There's also that really funny clip of uh, Baba Razam pulling Hadis Rope's hair. Have you seen that? No. <laughs> like, he takes a wicket and he runs towards him and he's like fucking pulling his hair on his head. It's so funny. Uh, but that's just more just, you know, rough. That's like, that's that's like basketball, right? Hard. Like basketball, you do like a hard slam dunk. They're like slapping your head and like pushing you really hard. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. You know, right? Yeah, you wouldn't know what his ass is, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I think it's all just silly. But I think so uh again, Mazar Arshid, I wanna read a tweet. So he was saying, you know, he has three tests to play. He's playing the international uh the ILT twenty, whatever that freaking India based UAE T twenty is. He's playing the PSL and then there's nineteen T twenty I's coming up. Uh you know, mm-hmm. this year and next. Well, now next year. Um, you know, 10 are against New Zealand on their own. So he's like, who's going to captain in those games? What if his deputy win, wins more games? Can this work in Pakistan's fickle cricket culture? Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I was that's true. Thing, like, that's exactly what we're saying. That, this yeah. culture sucks. Like, it's so weak. I think Rizwan is going to yeah, be captain. I feel like we've been... I, 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 I feel like... This is getting so repetitive. Like, I don't know. We, we we always say, like, I wrote an article yesterday on our website, and I, I was saying that nobody in Pakistan cricket wants to take accountability. And this is kind of, this, you know, we're talking about the same thing, right? No, it's the same cycle. Like, I think you need to go uh, scorched earth and just destroy everything, build it from the ground up. That's not going to happen. We know that's not going to happen. But um, I, think, I think the best secondary solution is just back these guys for two years and see what happens I, that i you know i what else can you do right i, I don't want to sit here and shit on shaheen right now regardless of what i think of Bawad or him as a captain shaheen has one two I think PSLs. Shaheen's give, gonna do give great. him i don't know i think shaheen's gonna do great i think that uh i actually don't think he's gonna do great man no, I, I, I think yeah, i think he's gonna I, get yeah. I think he's gonna have too much pressure. He's he's our strike bowler. He's he plays three formats. This is gonna be too much for somebody like that. I think that is fair. I, just, I feel like you have something to add here. No, I mean like I I don't think he's gonna be that great as captain. And then I also don't think he's gonna be able to like stay on as captain given his injury history. I think Zayn kind of touched on it. The vice captain better be ready because Shaheen's gonna be injured going out the field every other match. I also Shaheen think in can Lahore, captain. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Oh God, don't. Yo. Anymore, no. <laughs> Oh, if the Har Ahmed is playing the Pakistan, I he, guess maybe Sh- Shadab's team isn't in the semifinal. Ja, no, no, he's, he, he's not captain. He came back. He's, not he's gonna playing, be you know, the Pakistan Cup. And I bet ja, you anything, half these other guys aren't doing it, even if their team is in the semifinal. You know, I, I bet you anything. I don't Riz, know. Rizwan is the only choice for T20 captain. I think he should have been the guy. That was my guy for T20. That captain. was my guy too. That was everyone. I guy. also think uh, I also think Shaheen uh, benefited a lot from having like an absolutely stacked Lahore Kalander squad. I feel like 
with the quality of batsmen in the Pakistan Super League, which is not that great, if you have Rashid Khan, Harris Rove, and himself, that's basically like a cheat code. Um, well, Zaman like, Khan as I, well. I don't... Who's another like amazing and Zaman amazing. Khan. Yeah, I mean, absolutely yeah. stacked. And I'm sure you know some credit to Shaheen. And then you have Fakhar Zaman and Abdullah Shafiq at the top of the order. Well Right and like no, okay, guys, you can't say that. like he was no. still the captain. You can't you can't say he's, Patel, he has man. a stack team, so he he doesn't. Well, he does have credit. the Pakistan team, this, so like I mean that that is basically is half problem, the team, right? right? Like, yeah, that's what I mean. So he the, will do. Yeah, he so will what? do well. <laughs> he will do well, but the biggest thing is what's the culture going to be like? Who's going to back him? And how is he going to carry himself? Is he going to be humble, or is he going to be like you know, mai mai You guys like that? Is Babur going to backstab Shaheen no, Shah Afridi? Bobber has a good circle, know, man. Is Rizwan going to lobby for his own captaincy? <laughs> Will Sir Fraz make a comeback? <laughs> Will Sir Fraz make a comeback? As we can see here. Kick, kick Rizwan out. <laughs> Will, Will Sir Fraz make <laughs> That's it's funny. Yeah, man. Sir yeah, man. That's, so, that's funny. But I, I hope he, not for T20s. Like, I mean, he's in test. You want him to make a comeback for T20s? Well, no, that's enough, man. That's enough. That's enough. Don't be yeah. serious. Don't, no, that's enough, on, dude. <laughs> that's enough. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> that's I'm enough just saying, your, he was uh... a great T20 captain yeah. and he was hard done by. I wouldn't bring him in at this point, but... He has he a legacy and we should leave that legacy team. alone now, right? Like, he he broke records for Pakistan, 100%. But, yeah, if he can score some good runs in tests, if he can score some good runs in tests, like, we're good to go, right? Yeah. All right. What's next on the menu, bro? And, or sorry, are we still talking? No, no. Hold on. Before before we, uh, you know, we talked about Shaheen, the captain. Give me like, who do you guys? Who do you, who did you guys want as captain? Rizwan. Rizwan. Rizwan, Rizwan makes sense. Rizwan so makes okay. Sense. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I've been thinking about the whole time. Okay. <laughs> now, if okay, Rizwan. Okay. So here's a couple things. Okay. Here's a couple things in my head. Okay. So one, Rizwan and Bobber think alike. Right? Rizwan and Babur think alike. They're very good friends. What's the top order now going to look like? Because everybody's criticizing Babur and Rizwan as the openers. What's the top order going to look like now that Shaheen is captain? And given the fact that Shaheen has some bugs in his ear that are telling him what to do. And what do you guys think? <laughs> I think the. I think the... <laughs> the openers stay the same, Baba Rizwan, but I also think like Shaheen's gonna bring himself on at like four and be like, "Oh, it's a pinch hitter." He's gonna keep doing that. Uh, I, I, it's gonna happen at least a couple times. But I, I feel like it would be like almost like suicide, to, like change up Baba Rizwan. I'm, even though I'm not a fan, like it does it's work. It's just so secure, so right? It would be dumb to change that. Bring Saima yeah. Yubin. Let's go, man. Bring Saima Yubin and make him open. Saima Yubin is going to get selected and then he's going to be like coming into bed like number seven. Bro, I'm That's scared Saima Yubin is going to turn into Hadar Ali, bro. Hadis, don't say that, man. I'm going to be really upset if that happens. I, so I'm, That's what's going to happen. Okay. I'm telling no, you right now. Forget Saima Yubin, okay? Forget Saima Yubin right now. I'm okay with Muhammad Hadis coming in as one of the openers. You know, mm-hmm. Muhammad Hadis comes in with I'd say with Babur, because Babur provides that stability at the top, and Rizwan comes in one down, or Rizwan goes to his ODI position of number four. Um, and number... Yeah, Ri, Maslana, Abhi, di, di, you know, we're talking about these tactical decisions about the batting order and, like, what to do there, but what's going to happen is, if this guy moves Rizwan to four, and if he moves Babur to not open, people are going to be like, oh, he hates Rizwan and, yeah. and Babur. So, right. the guy cannot win. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, uh, th- that's the problem, right? Th- there's a whole... Pakistan cricket is not just cricket. This is like a it's a culture, you know. It's like it's a yeah. It's a whole culture of like negativity and just like how can I make this guy look bad, and how can I make you know myself look a lot better. I'm not saying that's what these players are doing. I'm just saying everybody around the team, and then it kind of trickles into the team too, right? I don't blame the players for for a lot of the shit that goes down. They're kind of just reacting to a lot of it that happens. Uh, but yeah, I think you know. For me, the captain, I think, would have been Rizwan. My, my choice would have been Rizwan. Uh, but yeah, tactically, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in that in the next... Uh, uh, go and see series. Uh, New Zealand. In New Zealand. The, in New Zealand. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, that'll be a good one to kind of get a sense of what these guys are going to do. If anything changes tactically and that sort of stuff. But if Nawaz plays that series, I'm just going to not watch it. Oh, He's uh, a good T20 <laughs> player, man. He want to... Man, you guys, that... seriously, man. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Don't, oh, Here, I, I don't. I don't want to imply anything, but the first time 
Multan made this uh, the PSL final. Wasn't Sean Masood captain still? Molten Sultans, yeah, he was. He was. Molten Sultans. (laughs) This guy said he speaks fluent Punjabi. Molten (laughs) Sultans. Molten Sultans. We need to make a shirt. Molten Sultans. Just like don't 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 pronounce any Molten Sultans. (laughs) Yeah, right. The Dippers will be reading it as Molten Sultans on the. No, no, we're not going to include any T's, right? Because you're not saying Mol- that. You're I'm saying molten. molten. <laughs> like molten, right? Molten. Quick, yeah. uh, quick aside, in one of my college courses, we were talking about like our cultural backgrounds, and I wrote down, I was from Karachi, Pakistan, on a piece of paper, and when our professor read it, uh, she's like, Karachi. Karachi. <laughs> Karachi. <laughs> which, 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 which white neighborhood was this in the Yo, man, United my, States? I a regular day in Ohio. <laughs> regular day in Ohio. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Canada make itni multiculturalism if people know how to say Karachi. Okay, but like, they, oh, they won't fuck that. Ohio up. is literally like a backwater state, right? So it's. Yeah, Bro, have you been to Ohio? To. Because you're absolutely right. Yes. <laughs> And I want to I want to tell you guys something really funny. But uh, so I when I worked. I still talk to this guy, actually. He was like this old Polish guy that I worked with back in like 2013. And he was like, where are you from? From Pakistan. And I was like, I'm from Lahore. He's like, Lahore. Ooh, French hooker. (laughs) Yeah, that's a very common joke, right? Lahore. (laughs) But he actually thought that, eh? Uh, I got a little excited. Um, Um, All right. Anything else about Shaheen, the captain, or T20s in general? Um I'm. I don't. I don't the batting order is what I'm excited to see what I'm... they're going to do with the batting order. <laughs> That'll be cool to see. Yeah, T20 suck. I'm. I'm excited for that test tour. Um, that's real cricket. Mm-hmm. This is fucking like five T20s against New Zealand. Then they're going to play them again, like at home. You know, a few months later, at home. Then we're going to be ready for that T20 World Cup, and we'll be yelling at them again. Um, Hafiz Hafiz has okay. said he has... that he he like he so Mazur should per, uh, posted a video with um, Hafiz that he had a conversation with him a year ago and he wants aggression. He wants aggression. (laughs) And uh, And did you see on that tweet, people started posting Hafiz's stats uh, and strike rates in T20s and like one day his strike rate is like 74 in one day. (laughs) But he's now, he's now chief selector. Bro, Azam Khan is coming back, man. (laughs) Oh God! Okay, hold on, hold on. So before, so let's talk about Hafiz, right? Nightmare. I think that's the next topic. We need to talk about Hafiz, I like the professor. who has been appointed, um, who has been appointed team director, and then earlier today he just, I think he decided I'm going to be the head coach too because he's a team director. So who's the, like, <laughs> I tweeted about it. I was like, this guy sat down and he was like, I'm going to look at all the candidates, and the only person fit to do this job is me myself. So <laughs> I'm the head coach now. Um, so he's he's coaching Pakistan um, for this test series in the New Zealand uh, T20s at least. Uh, what do you guys think of this? I think there are better choices for coach at least. Um, I mm-hmm. like from my perspective, the team director. Like, you know, I don't know what the team director really does. Um, I guess overall kind of high level strategy with sitting down with the team management and that kind of shit. But. Um, and I, you know, I thought about it and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly okay with a person who's recently retired in that role. I think that's, that's, that makes sense. Um, I don't know if I would have picked a fees for this, but um, head coach, definitely not a fees. This guy has no coaching um, experience. There are so many qualified coaches. Uh, you look at somebody like Azar Mahmood, who has coached and has coaching credentials. You look at some, I don't know if these guys are coaching somewhere right now, but if you look at somebody like Yasser Arafat, who is like, uh, I was reading up on him today because when he announced that he was himself going to be coach, I started looking at like what, what some of the other options might be. Yasser Arafat, uh, this guy is a, this guy is the only Pakistani to complete the, English, uh, the England and Wales cricket board level four coaching course. He would be good, and I don't think he's coaching anywhere right now. He would so, be good, you know, somebody him. like that. You can get somebody like that. He is like, Pakistani. You he, can get him. He falls in line with uh, Wasim Khan, Ehsan Mani, like their train of thought because he is a Pakistani, 
but he's played majority of his career outside of Pakistan. He's played county cricket for majority of his career. Yeah. They, they selected Did him here and there. Cricket, right? And if he's yeah. done the course through them, bro, he's not here for the BS. He probably knows I agree. better than I agree. He would he would not be a for PCB. He would not be a good pick because no. he was he would actually do some good shit, right? That's what I mean. I I, I am totally against this Muhammad Afi's appointment of as coach as team director. I don't really care. I don't know how much impact that makes. Um, so but, hold on, know, Hafiz. I, I thought I wrote Hafiz, it in my notes today. I thought Hafiz was chief selector. No, no, no. no Wahab Raz. Wahab, yeah, we'll get to that next. That's another fucking crazy one. That so Hafiz is head because. coach. Hafiz, He's okay, so director, this is what happened. Or... Hafiz was appointed team director, okay. and then he appointed himself coach. How coach. is that possible? Show um, me where this... this is, bro. I didn't know this. I mean, it doesn't say it doesn't say anywhere that he appointed himself, but as team director, he, he... no, the PCB is merging the roles. Achoo. That's the official statement. Merging oh, the is that the official? Okay, okay, I see. Yeah. So then, yeah, basically, what they're telling us is that Grant Bradburn did nothing because. I actually had that in my notes for this episode that if this role is anything, uh, the team director role, if that, this is anything like what Mickey Arthur was doing, he was kind of the face of that coaching staff, right? And he kind of took, he did press conferences and, and shit like that. And he was kind of, he was de facto head coach. And so now it makes sense that they're, if they're merging these roles, then yeah, he had coach. I don't know. I think this is going to be a disaster for him as a head coach, but what, what are we going to do about that? I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, um, it would. I I'm looking at the article right now. He has absolutely no coaching experience, which you know for Pakistan is the norm. You don't want to, God forbid, the country would explode if you select like a qualified like guy with credentials for like the proper role. But no, you have to go back to a guy who you know averages like 74 striker. I mean, whatever. He's played for a while. He has loads of actual experience. I mean. On the strike Steve rate, Jones, on, man. On the... I just want Steve Jones. <laughs> Steve Jones. Like, I don't want. Those, I don't want like some former player again. Like running imaginary, imaginary Steve rate. Jones. Uh, on the point well, of I strike rates, take, like... I just want to say what? on the point of strike rates. Uh, I, I will give him credit. You know, if he's played for a long time, he played until a very late age in his career too. He I did, think. but I, mean, I think he did kind of change I mean... in the end. There, he like I, I'm yeah. thinking of that like. 20 uh ct 2017 innings where he came and he really accelerated at the end of that innings mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff. he, he, he did kind of change career, his approach he made a career on his right arm chucking and then his batting like developed to like average level and he, he played for like 20 in his years last two years i think he was better than, i think he was better than average huh? towards the end of his career man he i think he was a good he had, he had in his last high, two but, years uh, look at his numbers in his overall, last two yeah, years of t20 and odi cricket he uh he had a very high. He had a pretty good strike rate. I want to say very high because you guys might shit on me if I'm wrong. But he had a he had a really good strike rate. He was hitting sixes. Remember, he said he learned in the CPL. He went to the when he played in the CPL. He's like they play a lot of golf, uh, and that's how they learn yeah. to hit very strong sixes. And that's what he started doing. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Um, <laughs> I'll never forgive his fees for. I don't know if you guys remember 2011 semifinal, but he played that. Fucking stupid shot. Um, him and Karmanakul were playing really well as openers. And after Karmanakul got out, he played a very... He tried to play the scoop shot. Uh, the same shot that Mispa played in that first uh, T20 PTSD. World Cup final. He played that shot and he got caught um, um, behind uh, caught behind by the keeper. Uh, just edged it. Uh, and he was playing well otherwise. Like, why try something like that? Anyway, I'm just kind of... I remember that wicked and I was like, why the fuck would you do that you guys my camera is gonna be uh, off did for the do? rest of the time sorry yeah no it's okay. okay nobody cares about your booty anyway my booty i was about to say i, I was gonna yeah. miss your face <laughs> your booty or your booty yeah, both <laughs> uh yeah but that's mama the fees anything else you guys want to say about that uh head coach team again right? man wait and see but again man they just they're just doing this no this is not something i this, this this one is one where I don't want to wait and see because this one pisses me off. Uh, a bit. Uh, it pisses you uh, off the way it's done, but I, I think Hafiz it can make some change. He's very outspoken. He speaks the truth. That's why he's the professor. Professor for a reason. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll reserve judgment, but uh, I think there were just many other I'm I'm okay with this one. I, 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 to be honest, I'm okay with this one because I hope he has his ethics, the professor of ethics. I, I hope yeah, he comes in and, and okay, uses those ethics in this setup, in this uh, corrupt society. Yeah, of ethics say coaching to the yogi does. And uh, he's not going to... What, 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 you want to teach people how to be better people and they're going to become better players? Is that 
you're, what did Grant you're, Bradburn do that Hafiz can't do? That excellent point. I don't know what Grant Grant Brad, Bradburn ever did for this team. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying like, like I think like, Mickey Arthur was the coach. Who was that? Like we were talking earlier, like once once February hits, it's all gonna everything's gonna be reset again after these elections or whatever. So that's I mean, I, I'm I don't like it, but I'm, yeah. I'll give it a shot until then. Okay, what's next? Same old, same old Pakistan. What's next? Uh, yeah, more appointments. Morty Merkel resigns as bowling coach. Uh, I don't know if this is confirmed yet, but Omar Gul is, uh, I think, going to be the bowling coach, at least for the Australia tour. Uh, Omar Gul was asked about this, and he said that PCB has not asked me yet, uh, but I would be honored to do it. And I immediately thought back to him using Shadab Khan of faking that injury um, <laughs> in this World Cup, and this guy sucks too. I don't like him. Um, you don't like Gulli? Particularly for that comment. Oh, okay. It's a it's a really weird thing because I kept. No, why would I not like, like you? I like you, man. <laughs> I'm talking about over. No, I said you don't like Gul. I said no, no. I said you don't like Gul. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, like, it, it was weird. Like I would keep hearing about how Omar Gold throughout his entire playing days and even a few years into retirement, he was like a consummate professional. Like day in day out, he would always like never complain about non-selection. He would always would be working hard. And then like the past like two weeks, he like threw all of that away with all this like crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, but you like that? My players, go Johanna, once they retire, they just get something happens to them. A, a switch flips in these guys, and they just become the most toxic motherfuckers in the world. They get used to the spotlight. They just want to say whatever brings spotlight back on. Them. I think they that's like my, it's like a weird like. Uh, and like you can't a, even say it's like for a complex where they need they just need to be the center of attention. That's that's what mm-hmm. they want, and they just start saying weird and retarded shit on 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 air, and it's just oh. yeah. Um. What I can't say retarded. On <laughs> you, you guys, I, I you guys say physically that... challenged. They start saying physically challenged. Stuff no, you air. called like I showed a retard in the last episode. Like did you I? Call, you called him an actual Yo, man, retard. Yeah, get, yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> that was that was fine, but I, I I say retarded and it's a problem. Okay, uh, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. move on. It's the ED man. Yeah, it it does. Oh, it's changes everything. Um. Okay. Okay. Gole. I like Gul. But Gulle? but have you yeah. guys heard him speak? No. Nope. Watch a clip of I him talking. Him speak. Just any clip. <laughs> Why? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you getting at with just this? Watch it. That's all I want to say to the viewers. Watch. No, the listeners. Not, yeah, what, like, no, his voice just doesn't what, suit he's... his. It doesn't suit <laughs> him. It doesn't suit his career. His uh, his profession. But Leah was in Yeah. I'm, like I'm just looking at his, I'm just I'm just looking at his numbers right now, and for all like his like exploits and like ODIs and T20s being the goldozer, he was not that great of a no. test bowler. Um, he averaged like 35, and like even in Australia, this upcoming upcoming tour, he averaged like 53. And I I don't I want to know on what like was he like a bowling coach in like domestics or I know he was with Afghanistan for a bit, um, but. Can we pick someone qualified? Bro, he was with Afghanistan Please. and they produced Pretty. Fazal Haq Farooqi, Naveen ul uh, Who else, man? Gully made them, bro. Fazal? Asghar Stansky. Fazal Haq Farooqi. Are you talking about Asghar Stanek Sai? He changed yeah. his... Say that again. Asghar Stanek Sai? He changed his name to Asghar Afghan. Yeah, he did, yeah. Passionate. Bobber's going to change his name to Bobber Pakistan. Yeah, I was just gonna say or that. That's, Packy that's what, for sure. Somebody should, somebody should do that. Bobber Packy. Bobber Packy. Bobber Packy. Rizwan oh, Lahori. Sarfraz Karachi 8. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, yeah. Um, other rumored appointments. Uh, Wahab Riaz is chief selector. Sahil Tanvir as member of the selection committee. And that's it. That's all I got. Sahil Tanvir as member of the selection Wahab? committee is okay. You because he's he's not chief selector, he's just a member. Mm-hmm. You can appoint anyone, to <laughs> no, but okay, let me ask you guys a question who would you be happy with as chief selector? Yeah, Steve I Jones. my opinion on this is that sorry, who right? Steve, <laughs> Steve Jones, Steve Jones, yeah, Steve Mike Jones. Just, I, I generally want some outsider running PCB, like, I want someone who would like be free of any influence. No one can buy him. He's going to let's run this whole thing objectively and select like the best players. My not thing, my like, thing right, with chief selector yeah. is that this should not be a role. This should not be a committee. This should not be a role. I the agree. coach and the captain should, should pick a squad for every tour based on conditions, pick who you want to pick. And that's it. Like, I don't understand what the fuck, like 
a selector picks a team and then the coach, if the coach doesn't agree, they have a problem with it. If a captain doesn't agree, they have a problem. Just, I don't understand why this is even a thing. I think, I think to get, and this is get some help, uh, you know, a chief selector should like, they're almost like a scout, right? They should maybe pick like a 30 yeah. man group of people, something like that. And then, you know, the, the captain and the coach get to take like 15, 18, 20 people from that on their tour that they go on. Uh, something like that, because you can't, like if you're playing with the same 11 people, you don't know who's doing good and who's not and who is up for selection. Like there has to be some outside factor that's watching everybody else. It's not, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not. Uh... So, okay. The way I see it, we shouldn't have a chief selector, but we should have a selection committee that kind of gives their input on in Karachi. This who's doing, this is who's doing well in KPK. These people are doing well, this, that, that, you know, all of that. And then you bring those people forward and people yeah. get involved. I don't know if that's how, how it is. Right I mean, now. yeah, you're, you're just describing scouts. Yeah. Right? That's, scouting. That's what scouting yeah. You need, you need to have like one guy who's actually, I mean, like for how busy like head coaches and like select for head coaches and captains are they're not watching every minute of domestic cricket you need to have one guy whose job it is to watch all domestic cricket and actually pick the standout players not just go off numbers but bring in the eye test too so That's i think a, yeah. you do need like a chief selector um but he should work in conjunction with the head coach and the captain but i do feel like you do need like one person like making that final call and i think it has to be someone like outside of the actual jurisdiction of the national team like captain or uh or like the team director, whatever you call it. Yeah, and I mean, I you know, just North, North American that. sports do this, right? They have whole scouting staffs that that go mm -hmm. and, you know, they, in some cases, like, I know the, you know, in hockey, Toronto Maple Leafs go and scout people in Russia. They go scout people in Europe, Sweden, in these places. Everywhere. Right? And and sometimes they find a player that is, that nobody has kind of uh, uh, been keeping an eye on and they bring him in, they give him like an entry level contract and, and, and see what happens, right? This is, you know, this is international cricket, so it's a little bit different. You have your own domestic system. But, yeah, you know, you have, you should have people like those Thief Emil, we talked about it last time. This guy, does this guy watch any domestic cricket? What What is his cre credential for? What is he going to select people based on? So what's um, those Thief Emil again? Now? So, you know, he's he's the interim chief selector, but I don't know. He might have been removed. I don't, uh, because now, I don't think Wahab Riaz is confirmed as chief selector. I've seen it on Twitter. A lot of people saying it. I haven't seen a PCB media release, and I was checking that before we started recording because I wanted to make sure. But a lot of people are saying he's going to be the chief selector, and so Hilton Weir is going to be a member of the selection committee. So Yo, um, Emma Chazan that's Chazan all we know right now. Mark my words. Emma Shazad. Emma Shazad has had a lobby too. Um, uh, how does Sharon mute if you're trying to talk? No, I was just saying. You said uh, Emma Shazad's coming back. That means Omar Akmal's coming back too. And I feel like <laughs> with all these, like with all these, like these these exact people and like the selection committee and head coaching roles, you can make like 2012 Pakistan back. Yo, so, like, who was it then? Back. I think it was you who sent us that video, right? Of Omar Omar Akmal, uh, he was like training in a park. Yeah, <laughs> he's like training <laughs> in a red tracksuit, oh, and he was I mean, he was talking about like how he wants to make a return and everything. <laughs> he's like doing push ups. <laughs> Oh man, I sent that to my brother and we couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that's I think what we came up with is the best approach. We're the smartest people um in the world of cricket. I think the the scouting and <laughs> and uh, you know, you have a scouting staff who should kind of pluck people from the domestic structure. Um, but I still think that uh, and any you know, you have a good sense of like which 18 players are gonna be are you know lurking around being selected for the squad and i think it should be the captain of the coach who get together and do that the scouts job in this case we're talking about the selection committee i think their job should be to identify players in domestic and bring them up uh and, and push them forward to be selected and then it should be the up to the coach and the captain to see whether that's something they want to do or not um that's how i would like to see it happen but it's never gonna happen that way. So. I think I think that works, but then you also have to realize, like I think these coaches and captains, they, like they want the comfort of knowing who these players are. I don't think yeah, they'll never make the hard call yeah. of dropping like a poor performing player for like a good domestic one. They're always gonna be like, oh, I back my guy. I think he's gonna next match. He's gonna be back. I think you need like some that outside perspective. Be like, no, he's at his yeah. He's had his chance. There's this guy waiting in the wings. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, and and, and as you're there. describing, as you're explaining that, I think it makes sense to maybe even take the captain out of it um, and let him deal with the players that he has. Um, let yeah, the coach like do it. Let the coach do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the coach should be kind of the communication or the uh, 
the bridge between the captain and the selection, he should get together with the scouts and say, okay, what do we got here? Who can we bring up? That sort of stuff. But anyway, I think we're, um, none of that is ever going to happen. So it is what it is. Anything else you guys want to mention about Wahab Riaz as chief selector? I just want to mention one thing. This guy is still playing PSL. <laughs> so that I that seems so weird to me that a that a player who is actively playing your Premier T20 league is going to be chief selector for your national team, and um, he's also he's the gonna he's gonna he's gonna oh, sorry I'm you go. yeah I was no, just I'm gonna, just, I'm yeah. Just saying, yeah yeah okay I'm just gonna say like when he's like going into bowl he's gonna be he's gonna be telling the batsman like. You better get out if you ever want to have a chance of being selected. Uh, I he's better gonna, have a hat trick. Yeah. He's going to select himself, man. That's yeah. what's going to He's going to select himself in the Australia tour so he can bowl to Shane Watson again. He's going to make them pick Shane Watson so he can make repeat that spell job. again uh, from the World he Cup. He made a whole career off that one spell, man. Talk about how overrated that spell is. <laughs> It was so overrated, man. Thank I don't you. like. What is the big deal about that spell? I, okay, it, it was a good spell. I'll give you that. But like, Zan, are you still there, man? It wasn't okay. He it's bowled like five bouncers and didn't and took like zero wickets. Like, great. I mean, he did have that cash drop, right? Or how did he fucking drop that cash? But, yeah, but that, that spell I mean, is like, like it was a fiery uh, spell. A, it was only to Shane Watson. It was a fiery spell, but like he only troubled Shane Watson. Steve Smith was playing him very easily, and the other he didn't get any wickets. That you know. He did get no, one. Zilfikar Bobber dropped right? him, man. Dropped Shane Watto. Rahat Rahat Ali. Ali, Not Zulfikar Babur, man. It was Rahat Ali. I like Zulfikar. But he got that wicket of Michael Clark at uh, at uh, short leg, right? And that was a good wicket. He like he did he did scare them a little bit, man. He was he was. But I think that I think we hyped that spell up too much. It didn't like it didn't change oh. anything in the he, game. He had that spell in England uh, against England in the UAE where he bowled like eighteen overs in a row. I rate that. A thousand times higher yeah. than whatever he did. Yeah. Against but you know, I think World Cup and like the occasion. Set quarterfinal. Fucking test match in Dubai. Like, yeah. You know, that's nobody watching. That's a different. That's a different. I was watching. Thing. I was watching. You, I mean, no, no. I mean, nobody in the stands. Nobody in the stands. Oh, you know, that's true. Those test that's matches are like empty stands, yeah. right? Like nobody watches them. Mm-hmm. Free tickets and nobody shows up. Um, yeah, that's that's everything that's happened in Pakistan cricket uh, in the last like. Fucking two days. All this was happening. Um, the captaincy announcement and all that, all that stuff was happening during the India New Zealand semifinal, which is probably a good PR move by PCB because they kind of just went under the radar a little bit uh, while that game was going on, uh, at least from like neutral media and that sort of stuff. Pakistan people were still really active <laughs> talking about this uh, while the game was going on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the one thing I want to—I forgot to mention this when we were first talking about it. Um, captaincy and announcements made by PCB and how awfully it was done. They first tweeted that Shaheen would be white ball captain, which implies that he would be the ODI captain too. And then, mm-hmm. like five minutes later, they deleted the tweet and reposted it. And now it said that he was a T20 captain only. So as of now, there's no ODI captain. We know that Pakistan's not playing any ODI cricket uh, for a while, at least a year. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe that'll be Rizwan. Uh, who knows uh, what that's going to look like? But yeah, that, another another uh, example of PCB just having no having no skills in PR and uh, how to manage situations like this. Uh, they're just completely incompetent. And no skills, and, period. Yeah, and, and and don't know what to do. So. Yeah, you guys want to talk about some other stuff? You guys want to talk about the games, the two semifinals? Yo, you guys continue. Sorry, I got to run today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your uh, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say take your time. Go ahead. Okay, (laughs) thanks, guys. Great, great pod. Looking forward to what's gonna happen. And uh, we'll have Riaz for Prime Minister. I'm gonna cut this out because (laughs) we don't want to lose our listeners saying bye to you. Okay, bye. All right, see ya. Um, Bro, you know what I hate about (laughs) Zen? His opinions are trash, right? Uh, oh man, I would never say this to his face, but he's an awesome person. Yeah. He's, he's... <laughs> all right. Let's talk right, about no, you, you guys. Want you, you guys? You want to talk about quickly the India New Zealand game first? Yeah, let's then, do it. Let's um, let's quickly recap these games. Um, whatever we remember from them. Honestly, I was really when this India New Zealand game was going on, I was mostly focused on what was happening in Pakistan cricket. Twitter was kind of ablaze with all this information that we just talked about. So. Uh, not a lot going on. Um, 
the interesting thing for me in this match was what happened before the game, which was uh, the Crazy, whole, the pitch scenario, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll explain what happened. Uh, India got the pitch. Well, I shouldn't say India got the pitch switched, but um, the accusation is that India got the pitch switched for the semifinal against New Zealand. Um, so, you know, uh, the way this is supposed to work is that ICC and the host nation and the venue cur- curators have an agreement that... Um, knockout stage matches are supposed to be held on fresh pitches. And what that means is that they're not supposed to be on pitches that have already been used in the tournament. Um, So it was supposed to be a fresh pitch. They have numbered pitches on any given uh, venue. And so they were supposed to use one that was not used previously. They ended up changing it last minute to one that had already been used twice um, in the tournament before, which obviously is a, makes it, you know, drier. There's footmarks on it already from before. um, And that makes it, helpful for spinners and we know that india has good spinners so lawrence booth i think his name is from the daily mail Mm -hmm. he uh that's his name right lawrence booth yeah he he, yeah he put out a report before the match begun um that this happened and that the icc curator i forgot his name is but his name was in the article um he was not happy with the situation and, and everything like that so uh yeah that's what that is give me your thoughts on that Haris. i i for me this is like you know, typical kind of bcci right this kind of shit happens i was telling you guys mm-hmm. and i was recalling the test series earlier in india this year uh against australia where uh something similar happened where they had <laughs> they had a pitch prepared at one of the test matches which was kind of designed specifically to target uh, australia's left-handers they had like four or five left-handers in their top order and it was it had patchy grass in some areas, which was kind of, uh, uh, again, designed specifically to give them trouble. And it was dry in certain areas to, um, to do that. Typically, that's not what pitches are. You know, if, if it's grass, it's going to have grass all over. If it's going to be dry, it's going to be dry all over. And at the time, I remember Fox Sports uh, writing a, an article about that. And and it was kind of a big story. And then, you know, this kind of stuff happens and then it just kind of dies out. Uh, the noise fizzles out after the game's done and and that's that right but i do think there is something here i think there is a growing perception that uh icc is kind of just an extension of bcci um and and that's you know people are starting to notice people journalists now from australia england other nations it's not just you know when when any pakistani says it any pakistani media or fan says it it's like oh you guys are just salty um and that sort of mm-hmm. stuff right but now i think other other nations and other countries are starting to notice it um yeah give me your thoughts on this stuff i i spoke a lot there no i was saying we might as well just call it like the bcci world cup cricket world cup instead of icc uh, yeah i mean it, it sucks because you know like india's far away like, heavy favorites with world cup even before all this um i don't have an issue with like you know whatever the pitch is slow pitch is fast pitch is bouncy or like whatever unsafe the issue is the BCCI just kind of stepping in and unilaterally making this decision uh, over the ICC and their head curator, like the guy in charge of creating the pitches, um, even saying, oh, the pitch that I know I des- designated for the semifinal, it's, that's not the one being used. They just unilaterally decided to use the one that's been uh, used for two games. So I'm not upset that, you know, um, you know the pitch was off because, you know, nine times out of ten, any pitch, India will win. The issue is the BCCI stepping in and kind of making this decision. And I was, I don't know, I sent you that link to like the Pak Passion thread. And I was like going ham on people because India is like, that, there were a lot of fans there. I don't want to generalize, but there were some fans there of a certain nation. They were talking about how England did the same thing if against them in the um, in 2019 World Cup. There's a lot of like, what about ism? Like, you know, what about England? They did that one time. People weren't complaining when they played on use pitch and uh, Champions Trophy. Just want to mention on that, uh, the England thing. I saw a lot of tweets from Indian people on Twitter where they were like, oh, look at this uh, green pitch that England gave to Sri Lanka, uh, an Asian team in the 2019 World Cup. And I'm like, and they were playing uh, not England in that in that, uh, in that that game. The, mm-hmm. the, there was a picture that everybody was posting. And I'm like, you're comparing this game, which was a group stage match in 2019, Sri Lanka versus whoever. I don't even remember who it was, honestly. I think it was muted is it better what was the last thing you heard shit uh no you just you i heard most of it like against okay someone. uh so the, yeah you know sri lanka was playing new zealand in a group stage match uh 
in the 2019 World Cup. So the host nation wasn't involved. That's mm-hmm. that's one huge difference right there. And then the other thing is like, uh, you know, that pitch is like, you know, it is what it is. They they all the pitches were kind of like that, right? And by the end, I think actually I don't know if they were. I shouldn't say that, but um, that's a totally different scenario. Like this is this this, this yeah. Th- in definitely. this case, you have the host nation. They're playing a semifinal, and they're making a decision, like you said. The BCCI is making a decision, saying uh, we're going to use this pitch instead of this pitch. Um, mm-hmm. And like you said, I think India was probably going to win that game anyways. But there's a very uh, funny and like. Um, interesting uh perception of like them being frightened to lose um, yeah man and because they were probably gonna win anyways why do you need to pull this shit to give yourself an advantage that you probably don't even need and people are on on to, and again people on twitter exactly. are like uh you know oh satner is a good spinner this would benefit him too and i'm like yeah it would but why do focused. that anyway why why the question is why mm-hmm. do this if 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 none of it matters why is it yeah. happening? If there is a rule set in place, the worst part. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah, go ahead. No, I'm saying like the worst part was like you know, according to, like the head Gus Atkinson, like the guy in charge of pitches. Like this was made like last minute without proper protocol or and the reason he was given he didn't agree with. So you know if they went through the motions and like oh this pitch has this problem with it and like the and the guy in charge is like oh yeah that makes sense I guess we'll play in the other pitch. The fact that they tried to like looks like they kept this under wraps as much as they could. It's very, very suspicious. And like, it's manning, like you said, like you can't bring this up because there's a lot of like, what about it? So I'm going to like, and I was talking like, there was this one comment they're like, oh, if India was going to win anyway, then there's no issue. I'm like, that's, that's not how, that's not how that works, how this works. And they kept saying like, there's no official statement. It's all just hearsay. And I'm like, this is the official, the official guy in charge saying that you, we need, there needs to be an actual question of whether or not, you know, for the first time, is there actual favoritism by the host uh, in the World Cup, which, I mean, just totally, like, sours the whole, um, like, the whole feeling, especially if India wins the World Cup. Um, people are going to forget about it in, like, a couple months because, you know, credit India, they played fantastic cricket throughout. They really won defeated. But um, it just leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I, I think we're saying... Yeah, this is so weird. Like again, they don't they don't need to pull this shit, right? They they're undefeated mm-hmm. throughout the tournament. They're they're gonna win the final. Like actually, if any team can give them trouble, I think in a final it would be Australia, and we'll get to their semi final in a bit. But um, yeah, I mean they they like they they would have won. Um, you know, it was it was a one sided game. It, it, you know, I don't know what was it, uh, three ninety eight. I think was what they scored. Um. Am I correct in that? Yeah, they, they put up they put up three ninety seven, and then New Zealand like scratched their way to like three twenty seven. Yeah, um, I, I, I will say that at one point when Daryl Daryl Mitchell and Kane Williamson were batting, it looked like they might get close. But oh, I I thought I, I was no praying there would be another Glenn Maxwell double yeah. century comeback. But those those things are really rare, right? right? Like uh, that, mm-hmm. it's very tough to do those things against the host in their in their barn and kind of you know very very difficult to pull those uh, kind of winning. Um, Innings off. Mm-hmm. Cody scores his 50th ODI century world record. Congratulations um, to him. Yeah, I don't know what else we can say there. Um, pretty yeah, comprehensive win. Uh, yeah, just um, mm-hmm. I have a note here in my uh, for this game. The last bullet point I have is fuck India and BCCI. So I mean, enjoy the <laughs> enjoy your victory um, against Australia on on Sunday. Um, uh-huh, for real. Yeah. Australia, South Africa. Let's quickly go through this game, too. This we watched That it. was a great game. Good game, right? Great. I prefer uh, these low scoring thrillers so over. So much fun. Like, these sorry, games are so much fun. Um, yeah, like I prefer these low scoring games over like the high scoring yeah. 450, 700 cumulative scores any day. Any day. Really run down to the wire. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, low, low scoring games are always fun. Like, my memories of low scoring games are like, you know, Pakistan scoring like 180. Um, back oh, in the day, and then somehow clawing to yeah. a win with Seema Kram and Rogarian was pull pull some shit together, um, and that sort of stuff. Those those like Sharjah and Dubai games, like when we used to play like a tri series against India and Sri Lanka or whoever it was, South Africa, 
Um, those are some good memories, man. Low scoring games where like our bowling would just get us there and that sort of stuff. But yeah, this is kind of the sim- kind of a similar thing, right? Uh, South Africa scored mm-hmm. two thirteen. I didn't watch any of their batting. Um, I woke up. Oh, I went down the was hurting. Oh yeah. Uh, but I, mm-hmm. I I think they were like uh, four for like twenty four or something, right? Um, yeah, they were that. four for twenty four. I mean, like, and that's the thing when South Africa chose to bat first, you know, everyone's in in their minds thinking, all right, another three eighty, three ninety, four hundred something score, and then they just credit to Australia's bowling man. Stark did great. Hazelwood like ripped through that top order, and then the absolute mind blowing thing is like Travis Head coming in for like his very first over taking like two wickets and it was like all happening like this is like yeah. peak australia i think Did we you were watched talking the whole earlier on the first batting innings no just the tail end of it um okay. i saw david miller a little bit um yeah, but um yeah we were talking earlier you know australia lost their first couple matches we're like all right is australia done and then you, you can never really count out the aussies man yeah and i feel like when they lose a couple times they get they uh, they take that to heart and they they come back stronger and they, they're they're I think yeah I think Australia is what all Pakistan fans think like Pakistan is like you know those a couple of games are they gonna bounce back this time no, yeah. I, I think that's Australia yeah. far from week. it far from it uh, oh, but yeah. yeah you know uh, like Australia um, I was I was thinking of saying something while you were talking there and I forgot the point that I was gonna make but yeah I think they're you know they they kind of scratched their way to a win today. South Africa, yeah, I was going to ask you, I remember now, I was going to ask you if you consider this to be a choke by South Africa. Definitely not, definitely not. Choke is, choke is we're like in a winnable position, like uh, Afghanistan choked. A choke is like a strong, I think uh, uh, South Africa just like, lost pretty badly, uh, pretty like, closely, must have sucked. I don't think it was a choke, I hate seeing that because like, you know, they have the chokers tag, I don't think they choked in this World Cup at all. Um yeah, definitely not choke. They they were in it to the last match and last um they might have collapsed. Collapse might have been the right word, especially early on. I wouldn't use the word choke. Considering it was pretty good captaincy and like good management to have the game that close, especially considering Australia put up like sixty runs inside six overs. Um so to pull the game back that much is the absolute opposite. I think it's a tough loss. I wouldn't call it that. Yeah. I mean, you know, um I guess you could argue it both ways. Like if you if you look at it from a, like you said, you know, they've been putting up 380, 400 batting first throughout this tournament. And the one time where they needed a score like that, they kind of crumbled. So I guess if you look at it that way from a, from a tournament perspective, that is a bit of a choke, but I don't, like you said, I don't think this is a cho- A choke would be like you score 400 and then get, they chase that down or like, you mm-hmm. know, something like that. Um, I think people use the cho- term choke a little bit too loosely, but... Um... <laughs> you have to be in like a winnable position. Exactly. They were never in a winning position game. in that game. Yeah, exactly. um, but yeah, I, uh, uh, South Africa, like, I really was rooting for them to to get to the final at least to so see what they could do. But, I, I you know, um, I also think that Australia and India is the final that we want to see. I think it's, it's probably the two best teams in the tournament uh, coming in. Although Australia were kind of out of form coming in, but um, they're kind of they're clutch in these big tournaments, right? They're they're there to play. And they always turn up. To win. They always turn up. Um, so yeah, South Africa, um, you tried again and you failed. You guys suck. <laughs> um, no man, I, I like I like I like the Sapphires, man. They have a special place in my heart. Um, Did you one, see Imran Dahir was there too? Yeah, yeah, uh, he was watching, watching from behind the, the side screen, right? Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Kind of sad uh, when there were like ten runs left or something. Um, but yeah, let me ask you something about the last question mm-hmm. about this game. Uh, I tweeted about this um, when South Africa was bowling today. Um, he brought on uh, Temba Babuma, Tem- Temba Big Booty Babuma. He brought on Keshav Maharaj. I think a bit too late. Um, uh, he was bowling with his Pacers and. Um, Travis Head was going insane. Um, and uh, Aiden Markroom came in and he bowled. He got a wicket, I think, in his first over, and then, which was a first wicket ball. made in. First ball. There you go. Yeah. And he got a, he had a wicket made in, right? First over. And I then so, yeah. he bowled two overs, and then he kept persisting with Robata, I think, on the on the other end. And then he gave um, uh, Kotsa one over, too, right? Um, or a couple of, or I don't know how many it was, but I was thinking at that time that he was taking too long to bring on yeah. his strike spin bowler, uh, either Shamsi or Keshav Maharaj. And I was thinking about like, we shit on Bauer for this all the time. And I wonder if South African fans are feeling the same way. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I just 
wanted to bring that up in the sense of like it's not just Babur. You know, we need to we need to yeah. this this is a learning curve for a lot of captains, I think. Um, and like I said, you know, uh, we've talked about about you know he's been captain for four years. He would have learned and grown from this from these experiences. I hope um, he's never gonna get that chance now. But um, it's not just. I don't want to make it sound like I'm defending Bauer because Temba was also shit today as captain. Yeah. No, but, I I was actually kind of a fan of his captaincy. I mean, like you keep going. No, no. That, so th- that was one decision that I was looking at in a microcosm of like yeah. you know we mm-hmm. talk about these kinds of defensive, uh, you know, saving over strategy a lot with Bauer and Pakistan captains, but he kind of did the same thing today. I think by the time he brought them on, it was a bit too late, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the score was like he had. I think uh, Coates's first over went for 15 runs, three boundaries did, or something yeah. like that. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. and he, I think he brought him on right, maybe right after that, or he gave him one more over, maybe I don't remember. But oh um, yeah, Marco Jansen, you think you're thinking of? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. All I remember yeah. is that uh, a few overs went by, and I was thinking, why isn't Maharaj bowling? And then Maharaj came in, and he he bowled. Um, he got a wicket on his first ball wicket. as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there you go. I mean, give me your thoughts on that. I I, I think uh, something yeah. to talk about um, there for sure in terms of captaincy. I yeah, I think the one big stain on this was bringing on your spinners too late. I I mean, but I don't blame him exactly for you know persisting with your fast bowlers, especially when you have like Kagi Sarubada and like one fifty Joe Kotsi. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like near the tail end when things got tense, like constantly switching up your bowlers and like bring in like multiple slips and like a like leg slip and like packing the infield and like constantly on like the on like the fly and making these changes i actually really like that um so i think the yeah field yeah, placings the, were definitely good he had leg slips and that, like, that was at one great. point he had a silly point and two slips and i was like yeah that's like test that, match that, it was like a test uh, match man. yeah that was great. Yeah, really good really good oh he has like a hint of like test flavor to it or the best yeah. man. Um, um especially when it's like turning like turning square off the pitch um, yeah. Even like Aiden Markham, like part timer, was getting like absolutely immense turn. There was like the drop catch. Um, couldn't call like like couldn't take a tough one. That could Four have been, drop like, catches range. Um, yeah, in South Africa. That mm-hmm. that's and yep. being a very important um, figure, right? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. let's move on. Uh, forget this game, man. Uh, Pakistan's not in it. Who cares? India Australia final. Who you got, man? Rooting for Australia. My mind says. India, you in a not a, it'll be a comfortable win. Um, yeah, for India, I think it'll I think. be a comfortable win too. I think India's it won't be like a dominating win like they did um, against New Zealand. But I think if India bats first, you know they win by what, 80, 90 runs. Yeah, 70, in that in that article with the pitch thing, they were also saying that uh, they're going to do the same thing for Ahmedabad in the final. So let's see if that happens. Oh, for sure, um, for sure. But yeah, we'll 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 see if that ends up being a fact. And you can't complain about it, otherwise you're racist against India. <laughs> Uh, the one uh, thing while you were talking, uh, you were saying that um, the reason that they gave the ICC pitch curator was uh, what was the reason? Uh, you know they didn't give a reason, but like the, the article says, like the reason given to Gus was not one he shared. Wanted like, to hear that okay. he didn't agree with that opinion, which is like you know red flags, um, right? Especially since this is the guy. Well, why wouldn't he? Why that. wouldn't he just uh, the that ICC dude? Why wouldn't he just tell us the reason and? So we can, you know, make a judgment on like whether that's a sufficient reason or not. Because the ICC is in on it. BCCI equals ICC <laughs> equals big three equals pick three. Pick three. I love that pick three thing, man. It's pick three. Hilarious. Have you seen that little like comment of like yeah. uh, about the whole springs in his back? Yeah, man. But I mean, like, obviously, I don't want to go all conspiracy theory because I always try to stay away from that. But it is in the ICC's financial interest that India wins this world cup like it's yeah like, i mean it's dude it's right. very obvious what's what happens when these things happen man like definitely you know I, yeah i don't want to harp on this too much but we know something mm-hmm. is happening there for sure uh this pitch thing mm-hmm. is like uh, at least be a bit more discreet about it right like f- i don't know exactly like, man um and you don't need it like we talked about like you're probably gonna win anyways the, i think the thing mm-hmm. is that they're so afraid of losing and they're Especially after going unbeaten, <laughs> if you lose the semi final, India, 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 you know, they're, they're not mm-hmm. gonna have a good time going back home. So, I think that's what it is. Just like I said, just the fear of like losing, uh, and they're trying to do everything they can to mitigate that. All right, and I just know if the shoe was on the other foot and it was like Pakistan meddling in these and like the pitch, 
bro, the calls for Pakistan to be expelled from the ICC would be everywhere, man. It would be called like IC, like they would make up some like random nickname for Bob or like what's that? I can't yeah. think of it in my head, but they would be everywhere, man. The, yeah. the double standard is like what's really mad. With that, we should mention that Sri Lanka cricket has been re- <laughs> removed from the ICC uh, for government that's interference. Good. And that's the funniest thing to me because government interference, Pakistan should be out with them. Uh, and oh, India yeah. should also be out with them. Um, mm-hmm. So that's really funny to me. Arjun Ranatunga, 1996 World Cup winning captain, has, has <laughs> blames Jay Shah. He said that uh, he's the one who's actually running Sri Lankan cricket and he has a lot of influence on it. So make of that what you will. That adds another kind of <laughs> uh, not a good look to the BCCI, him coming out and saying that. He was very vocal about the whole uh, reserve day thing in the Asia Cup when that happened. Um, and And... Yeah, I mean, Sri Lanka cricket, I don't know what that does, really, uh, revoking their membership from the ICC. I don't know what that does. I, don't I know think I, I read an article that it's like more or less like a warning because like the next round of funding goes out like January, February. So they just have to get it together until then. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I heard it's like not like a super serious thing, but like it is like, you know, get your get it together. Otherwise, you know, there's going to be real consequences. Yeah. It's definitely not a good thing that's happening in Sri Lanka. Do you want to talk about the <laughs> the Abdul Razak thing? I don't know if you saw this. The video of him uh... <laughs> talking about what's her face? <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Bro, these these Pakistani former like players are gonna do anything to stay in the spotlight. Like, they're gonna make up the most random things. Yeah, like, Abdul Razak. Like, go uh... out, yeah, like, go out the win peacefully and people remember you for your South Africa knock. Now yeah. if you Google Abdul Razak, it's the things that's gonna come up. Yeah, a long-standing tradition of Pakistan cricket, uh, ex-cricketers, mm-hmm. right? Um, just making mm-hmm. stupid remarks. Um, I won't even say what he said, but he was talking. He was sitting in a panel uh, with uh, all the some of the players from the 2009 T20 World Cup squad. Uh, Shahid Afridi was there. Abdul Razak was there. Yunus Khan was there. Omar Gul was there. Um, and he, like, I want to actually talk a little bit about him saying uh, or accusing Babur of not having... A, the team's best interest in heart. He said, Uski niyad saaf nahi hai. And he gave the example of uh, Yunus Khan as somebody who was his captain in 2009, who had gr- great niyat apparently. Um, and then he made the sexist comment about Ashwarya Rai right after. Um, I don't know how he would know this. This guy, like, again, like these guys, I don't understand how um, they think this is going to be anything positive for Pakistan cricket. It's not. Uh, you're mm-hmm. just trying to make yourself relevant and this guy failed miserably and just had to apologize the next day for his uh for his comment about Ashwarya Rai there but the the funny thing I want to mention about this is Omar Gul and Shahid Afridi smiling right next to him when he said that uh, I'm talking about the sexist thing um mm-hmm. and then Shahid Afridi the next day was like oh mujhe to, I didn't I don't understand I didn't understand what he said and Abdul Razak should apologize oh, right. and I'm like uh-huh. Afridi you're fucking chutia too right like yeah, this, guy, this guy was visibly smiling when he said that and Omar Gul mm-hmm. too. And going back to Omar Gul being the coach of this, bowling coach of this team now, you know, this is now the second shenanigan he's had uh, mm-hmm. after, you know, the Shadab concussion thing and all that. Again, what do you, like, how do you expect these guys to perform when all this shit is like constant? It's just a constant cycle of like... Right, they can't expect toxicity. all this like, to help. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, in, uh, the worst part is like doing this on purpose too. Like they they know what they're doing. Yeah, like, they know it's gonna spew hatred and like cause a ruckus, which is gonna like spread. Yeah, and leading into <laughs> leading into the next topic, which is kind of tied to the idea of toxicity and just being a dumb idiot. Uh, I don't know if you saw this video of Inzabam al uh giving like an Islamic lecture. <laughs> I heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> he was giving an Islamic lecture and he was talking about his playing days and like how uh, he Muslim cricketers would go out. You know, he would go out to pray with you know for whatever prayer it was, and then he would uh, you know invite the Indian Muslim cricketers, Saheed Khan mm-hmm. and like Mohammad Kaf and these guys to come pray with him. And then he said that Harbhajan Singh would uh, sometimes come with them, and then he would listen to the khutbah from the Imam. And then he was like, uh, oh, he he was like, oh, he he told me that he he. He wanted to believe what the imam was saying. And he mm-hmm. just was very close to converting. That's what he said, right? And this video was on Twitter. And then Harbhajan Singh replied to this. And he was like, I don't know what the fuck this guy is talking about. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I'm a very devoted Sikh. And uh, this never happened. So, like, I don't uh-huh. like, I don't understand this, like, 
even if he's telling the truth, you don't need to come out and say that. Like, right? You know, no, you're, like, you're I mean, like, you got to leave really religious stuff out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> I don't know what else. I we mean, can cricket say is cricket. That. You don't bring don't bring in politics or religion into your. Um, don't do that on the cricket field. Yeah, like, I will say that this whole tablighi thing has been a big problem in Pakistan for a long time. In the oh, when he was captain, this was a big issue. Uh, Muhammad Yusuf and these guys. Um, you know, it's it's been an issue for for some time. Um, yeah, I don't doubt like Danish Canaria face like actual discrimination from the team. That pr- like almost definitely. definitely. Although Danish Canaria, like uh, you got to take everything he says with a grain of salt too. I think he's using a lot of this. Um, when the whole Rizwan thing happened in the World Cup, the praying thing, and then the whole Gaza tweet thing, he started mm-hmm. using that. He went on a couple of Indian news channels and he gave interviews where he was like, um, "Yeah, uh, I don't want to get too much into that, but." Um, I think he is using that a little bit to his advantage too, but I, I have no doubt that he faced um, oh, discrimination in the Pakistan team, and I also don't have doubts that he there would there, the, you know there there would have been pressure for him to like convert and stuff like that. Um, for we sure. know we know that that's been a problem for Pakistan cricket in the past. So you know, think back to like Ahmed Shahzad's discussion with Dilshan, which is a famous clip, right? And all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I don't want to get too much into this stuff. Pakistan cricket has always had these kind of problems off the field, uh, and they're going to continue, I think. Um, but here's hoping that you know Sean Masood can can fix some of this. And well, Masood, I mean, if, if we can't season, have Steve Jones, can maybe... if we can't have Steve Jones. I think Sean Masood is the next best thing. You know, a guy who can like speak yeah. English and like is educated. Um, yeah. All right, last topic for the day. I think we're getting tired now. Yep. Um, actually, last two. I want to talk about two two more. Okay, go for it. Um, Karachi Kings uh, post tweeted a poster of their uh, 2020. They won in 2020, right? The PSL. Um, yep. But anyway, yeah, they they were kind of like reliving that, and they posted a, uh, <laughs> a poster with like all the players, and they said, you know, reliving the memories of the 2020 when we won the PSL title. And Imam Wasim and Mohammad Amr were like front and center on that poster, and Babar Azam was like a very small like Babar Azam at the bottom there, giving somebody a high five. And everybody got mad about this. Um, so in the, in the in the intro of the show, I said that Karachi Kings hate Babur Azam. I think that's there is a there is an element of like lobbying, uh, and we keep bringing up mm-hmm. things like this in Pakistan cricket. This this is this is an issue. Uh, Karachi Kings and Lahore Kalandars, These these teams have lobbies against certain players and for certain players. Um, and so yeah, I just wanted to mention that. I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. Nothing. Have you um, have you heard of Hanlon's Razor? Sorry, uh, no. It's a, saying, it's a saying that I like uh, applied a lot of things. It's like never attribute to malice that can be adequately explained by incompetence. <laughs> so I honestly think it's very, very likely like the social media guy for Grouchy Kings like totally forgot like to mention like Barbarazam. Really? Because I, I mean, so. like, I don't was, think so. I don't think so. I mean, like, Barbarazam was like the man of the match. You don't, I mean, you can't like intentionally like leave him out because he was like, the player of the tournament too. Very, he was, yeah. I mean, but it's like knowing Pakistan and like the media and like people running it, it's it's just very likely that he's messed up. And they did like try to like try to like back that like uh like go back on it, like uh, include him with some other photos too, didn't they? So I mean, like I mean, what you say definitely makes sense too. I mean, there's I mean like no doubt there's definitely like teams lobbying for their own players and they'll do it any way they can. Um, but I. I for Pakistan, like just in my general fandom, I carry that saying around with me. Um, yeah, I don't no, think everyone. Would, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, Imad Basim and Mohammad Ahmed have had a lobby against Babur for some time now, right? So that that also plays just as for Imad Basim, and I like him. Um, yeah, I don't know. You, I don't I like, like him. him. I don't should have been a, should have been the one day team, and maybe and he wouldn't have turned up. this toxic if he wasn't dropped, right? But uh-huh. um, again, like you know, we talked about like I'm this guy doesn't want to. We oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> unfairly dropped unfairly yeah sure sure but i yeah, yeah. you know i'm always of the thought process that it, it 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 shows a lot of your character when wh- how you kind of deal with those situations right you look at somebody yeah, like definitely. iftikhar emma this guy i was reading a tweet today this guy is already playing uh pakistan cup going back home he uh the team landed back on the 13th and today the 16th and he was playing a game today for i think Peshawar. um so that you know and imad was seen decided to do TV gigs and play a T10 league um, rather than play domestic cricket. So 
Um, in my defense, in my defense, or in his I mean, defense. not in my defense, in his defense, counterpoint, domestic cricket has never been criteria for selection. Um, yeah, but you got to start has, somewhere, right? Like you can. I mean, like, like the, I mean, like these T20 leagues, these T10 leagues, that's what it, good performances there is what's going to get Mod Seam back. Um, like looking looking at the last like few run scores and wicket takers in the one day cup, like hardly any of them ever get selected. And the fact that people were clamoring for Muhammad Amir and like Sam Ayub in the one day squad, it wasn't because they did go in the one day cup. It was because they were doing well in CPL and Lincoln Premier League. So I don't blame Imad Seam for not playing one day cup because it's honestly like that's not like I mean it sucks, but it's not like the barometer for being selected. Like no one really like the selection that, yeah, doesn't care. That's a one fair one point, but I that's think, my, that's I think what, what we're getting at is like it's a it's a systemic thing. Right, oh, this man. domestic should be the criteria, and mm-hmm. if people aren't being picked from there, then you know you got you got to fix all of it. You know you can't exactly uh, like you're saying if Imad doesn't want to play uh, domestic cricket and he thinks that some other thing is gonna get him selected, sure, but you also can't be bitter on TV, right? It's it's a whole like mm-hmm. it's a whole uh, uh, collection of issues, right? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, um, that's what happened with Karachi Kings and their Twitter <laughs> Twitter account. Uh, last thing I want to talk about. This is really funny. Um, France Cricket Association. This is old news now. I wanted to talk about this in the last episode, but I forgot to bring it up. <laughs> France Cricket Association uh, have been accused, and ESPN Cricket Info has written an article about this. Um, they've been accused of faking game scorecards for their women's team uh, and just submitting them and making them up. Um, to secure funding for their for their cricket program, um, <laughs> which is really funny because uh, you know we talk about corruption in cricket. This is like this is just stupidity to a new level. Like they just made them up mm-hmm. and, and submitted them to ICC, and the games never happened for their women's team. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> don't defend these wonder. guys, Alex. Come on. No, I'm not. No, I mean, like, you gotta wonder like, the efforts they went to, like, fake these, fake this. They probably took less effort than actually staging some like women's matches. Like, yeah, you gotta like question like where they're coming from, why they would even like like do this. And I was, I'm looking at like, well, an I mean, now, there ha- like, there is cost associated with hosting matches or like conducting matches. Oh yeah, right? so it does. Sure. You know, <laughs> they were probably just like, yeah, the SE bus like bej do. They're not gonna. Who's gonna come uh, watch the French women's cricket team? Right? Nobody's coming to. Uh-huh. figure out if it's happening or not and they got caught i don't know how they got caught but they got caught um, it's funny I'm, I'm looking at the article right now and like the one of the chairmen on the board um she went to the ground where matches were supposed to be taking place and she found like people having picnics and kids cyclings and then like the day <laughs> after she would find the results online <laughs> like that's not what happened yeah yeah that's crazy uh, like imagine going uh, to like check out a game and it's like just people having fun in the park and nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. And then you see the next day, it's like somebody scored, you know, an unbeaten hundred. <laughs> you were there. It happened. It definitely happened. It definitely happened. Had the score At that point, you can it. make up anything, right? If you're like, uh, uh-huh. you can just request like, hey, can I get an 80 not out in this uh, in this innings? No problem. Yeah. Start charging people for that. And where where uh-huh. does this stop? It's like ridiculous right? the lines they went to. <laughs> Yeah, but French Cricket Association, get your act together, man. If you want to be a full mm. member of the ICC, if you want to get test status, don't fuck around. Fix your shit. <laughs> I saw, um, I saw like a Reddit post like long, like years ago, where it's like, it would have been so cool, and it could have happened if France was like another like test playing nation that like, came up with England. Like they were playing cricket for a while. Like I think the last time we talked about the Olympics, like France won like the, the gold medal in. Um, and they'll go well. They were in the Olympics playing like cricket, and like you just, if you think about it, France as a test playing nation like makes a lot of sense. Um, like it, it just seems like a really idealistic image. You know, you're going to tour France and you know taking pictures of the Eiffel Tower and like like imagining how like what the pitches would look like there. I mean, it just it just kind of makes sense. But I, I digress. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're not. So who cares? They're not. They're just, not. And good, they're faking good point, good point, good to, to try to get there. So. Yeah. Uh all right, man. That's all I got in my in my uh notes here. Anything else you want to bring up? 
that's all I got. I think covered a lot of stuff today. Yeah, yeah, lots of stuff uh, we've we, we've gone through. Uh, let's hope that next tour is going to be a good one to Australia. Let's hope the final is going to be a good one. Uh, India v Australia. Yes. Yeah, hope good final. Need a good final, a close final. Close I don't want final. another. There blow haven't up. been a lot of close games in this World Cup, right? Uh, really. Pakistan South Africa today's game comes to mind, but that's really it England, in terms uh, of uh, uh, Australia Afghanistan. The Glenn Maxwell one. Right. Oh yeah, that, that that thriller. I mean that's. Yeah, I, I'll count that. Um, yeah. Although it looked, yeah. you know, in the middle of that inning, Maxwell innings, I was like, I'm glad it's not going to win this. Um, oh, yeah. The way he was They're playing, I was like, he's ball. not he's not going to miss a single delivery now. He's mm-hmm. like just standing there and extending his arms. And something special. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. All right, yeah. Thanks, thanks for listening to us. Um, we'll be back after the final on Sunday, I think. Uh, and if... Uh, if all these Pakistan appointments for captaincy, coach, team director, bowling coach, and all these things are still intact by then, if they haven't been changed in four days, then maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll be back after the final. Miracle. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Shot Yard podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Shot underscore Yard, and follow us on TikTok at Shot Yard and YouTube at Shot Yard, and visit us at. Uh, shotyard.com now that the world cup is over i think we're going to be putting out some written content uh we've just been you know busy with the podcast and everything and i think we're going to be doing some more analysis and and um some editorials on the website so do look out for that if you're interested maybe a couple of surprise guests too maybe a couple of surprise guests we've got something in the works i think maybe uh, in, in the next dot, month dot, or dot. so uh some very some very famous people we have uh, who really want to be on our show mm-hmm. and uh we're gonna charge them to be a guest on our show, bro. We could get we could get Safraz Emma's <laughs> cousin to appear on the pod. Yeah, he's already he, he's already on the pod. Uh, Spoiler: his, alert. his name is Haris. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah, they're not first cousins. Relax, Haris. You're like third cousins, right? Second cousins. Who knows, man? I think we're but third you know, if we have a if, you know way. if we have a wedding in the family now, now that you know. Now that you're a part of the Shot Yard family, I, you know, if mm-hmm. when my son gets married, I'm expecting Sir Faraz Emma to be present at the wedding because I'm going to invite I, you. Uh, that'll be then... <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Not just Sir Faraz Emma. I'm going to invite you, and your plus one should be Sir Faraz Emma. My plus one should be Sir Faraz Emma. Okay, I think I can make that happen. Even if you're married by then, you're supposed to bring mm-hmm. Sir Faraz Emma. <laughs> I'll, I'll do I it. I'll keep that in mind. I'll, 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 I'll try my best. <laughs> I'll be like, this is the guy who talks crap about you. Yeah, yeah. Like, actually, yeah. Maybe don't invite him. If he doesn't listen to our podcast, he's he's like, Bob, uh, but I he can't understand know. English, right? That is. <laughs> I never insinuated that. Ah! I just said it doesn't make sense. Oh, I'm not going back into but it. But the shoes on the other foot, Hades doesn't like it, eh? No, <laughs> no. Okay, okay. I'm just glad we're not gonna. I, I think Sean Masood has to throw in at least like one Han huh, definitely as an homage to Babur. For every interview yeah. he does. And then all the Babar stands are going to go crazy. He's going to be, he's just respecting our king. And uh, yep. no, Bob, you exactly. know, Shamsud is very well spoken. I'm excited. I'm excited for the press conferences, at least. They're not going to be embarrassing. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the good part about it. Yeah. Um, but Definitely. yeah, thanks for joining. Let's end this thing right here. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time on Sunday. Thanks for listening. Take care.